Yo, what's good YouTube? My name is David. Today we're going to be doing some special stuff today, a little bit different than what I usually do. You can see I'm in the car. Um, I'm heading to my friend's place and we are going to talk about flat lays because I'm really bad at flat lays and she is crazy at them. So I asked her if we could do a video about flat lays and she was down. So we are heading to her place right now and we are going to learn how to do flat lay. My name is Jacinta, and I'm making not today. <laughs> Tell you, I have no presents whatsoever. <laughs> ASMR channel. So we have different ways of presenting non, and I think it is very important when working with flat lays that you experiment with texture and different colored prop material. So that includes like darker bowls or like maybe different kind of shaped plates, including sauce cups. So you see there's a clear one and there's a white one. So what I usually do is kind of experiment with different types of food and the way I make it so you can see that there's like this size of a non and a tiny one. To first start, um, I try envisioning how I would want to display my food, um, whether that's like a theme I'm going for or maybe even a story I want to tell. For example, if I made a holiday cocktail, I would probably want to decorate my flat lay with a lot of holiday decor, uh, whether that's like candy canes or maybe cinnamon sticks. Today, <laughs> I am going to go on and display a flat light of the non I just made. I'm going for more of a fall-like theme because we're in November. <laughs> so I'm just going to experiment and try out different props and lay out my non. And then from there we can start moving around pieces, linen cloths, and uh, experiment with different types of bowls to see what works best on the photo. Um, definitely experiment and take multiple photos so that you can sift through it and like see what you prefer best for your feed. For me, my feed's more of like a low saturated feed with browns and greens and I guess beige. <laughs> I have a theme going on on my Instagram, so that's where I'm going for what I'm going for. But for some people, that could be different. Um, before I start my flat lay, I usually find um, a tabletop or maybe some kind of platform that I would like to use. Me, naturally, I always go for a wooden table, whether it's this table, um, this breakfast nook that I have, or my countertop with a towel or a linen. So for today, we're gonna use this breakfast nook. First, put down the meal. I like to experiment with different types of linens too, um, just because it adds a little bit more of the natural feel to my cooking. I'm gonna experiment with this plaid, yellow plaid linen. It's a little bit wrinkly, so that's what I'm going for. Um, if it's too folded up, I probably wouldn't want to put that in my photo. Again, it's all about preference and the theme and story you want to tell. If you have extra ingredients, I suggest adding them to your flat lay to kind of have more of a personal touch to it. So I use some cilantro for the butter, buttery topping for my naan. Thus, I'll put the whole cilantro in here to kind of like give it a more wholesome feeling. Uh, one thing to note is that definitely experiment with different colors. Sometimes if I'm going for like a more natural looking flat lay, I might add a pop of color like some of the yellows or whites or maybe the green from the cilantro. So definitely experiment with that too. Are there any tools that you use while cooking? This is specifically for cooking, but I usually like to add the tools that I use for my particular dish. So that can include the rolling pin or a spoon or a fork. Uh, whatever I feel like matches the story I'm trying to present to my audience. Let's see, I'm gonna butter up my naan. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but experiment with texture too. Some foods may not have as much texture as my naan does. Maybe you can add like a blanket into your flat lay that is a little bit furry or um, sometimes I'll add like a plant to kind of add more spicing up my flat lay. So again, with experimenting with different types of dishes, as you can see, I have a clear bowl for my garlic and butter, a light wooden board for the naan, 
a rectangular porcelain plate for the whole cilantro and then I want to use the bits of cilantro inside a square porcelain plate. So you can see that there are so many different types of colors, shapes, and sizes of props for this flat lay. I'm just going to sprinkle some on. When creating your flat lays, make sure spacing the items. I don't want the whole linen, for example, to show or I'll put it underneath my main dish, which is the naan. Looking from where I am right now, it's hard to tell how well spaced each item is from the flat light because you'll be shooting from an, a bird's eye view. I'm short, so I have to sit on a chair too. So this is gonna be somewhat of a basic flat lay. <laughs> I didn't have many ingredients in this, so I may want to add the rolling pin, but towards a little bit of like the dustier side to not distract from the main subject. I have a dart bowl too, but I'm not sure if I want to use it right now. But once you prop everything, make sure you view it from a bird's eye view so that you know how it looks. Try taking an example photo and then realigning it to how you would like it. So for me, I don't want the emptier side of this plate to show. I'll put it in the corner. I may want a little more linen cloth. And as another example of how I do my flat lace, if you're shooting from an iPhone, I suggest putting on the grid lines right here. Can you see that? The grid lines. If you don't know how to turn that on, um, for the iPhones, if you, if you go to your general settings, just go down to your camera option in general settings and turn on the grid line. That helps in kind of making sure that I have a complete, how do you put it? Complete composition and I guess like the balancing of my phone is right because you can see that there's like an arrow in the middle of the grid lines that tells you when it's perfectly aligned, which means that you're directly above your flat line. So that's how I kind of measure whether or not I'm like completely over it or maybe too much to the side. I really like this composition right now, but I don't want the whole rolling pin in there. Usually with flat lays with food for me, I try to make sure that there is one main subject and right now there's not as my main subject. So I try to like space out other items so that it doesn't distract the viewer's eye from my main uh, dish. Take a few. I'm gonna take a few and then rearrange it, maybe switch out some dishes so that I kind of see what works and what doesn't in the end. Because taking the photos up front without editing does make a difference from when you do actually edit. And I change my mind a lot. <laughs> I tend to change my mind about how I want things compositioned or what colors I want to present to um, my audience. So as I continue to experiment with my flat lays, I'm going to switch out the main dish with bigger nons here. Um, I may consider keeping the smaller nons to the side, but it seems kind of weird if I have like two different shaped nons. Um, I personally find it weird, but you do you if you want to go for that kind of flat lay when cooking. So let me just butter up my naan. With any dish I make, I usually pick the best looking food to sit on top of the bowl. You don't see this, but underneath all these naans are very, very poorly made naans. It no. blends in with the pan. You know what you do is that you hide, you hide, <laughs> flat lay 101, you have to like hide the shitty side of the naan and then coat it and decorate it. <laughs> Garnish it until you don't see the burnt part. You have to cut. This one's the worst one, so the worst one goes at the bottom. You're not gonna see it. <laughs> the reason why I put it under the best, the best looking nods would probably be just to kind of like lift up the food, just to give it that illusion that I made a lot of good nods, but I actually didn't. It's kind of like those Burger King and McDonald's commercials where like they prop up their burger, but it's actually in reality very flat looking burger and you can see that the knots don't actually fill up the bowl so what i usually do for this kind of thing carefully prop up the knots so that it does fill a lot more of the bowl up because i want to get rid of all the negative space in the dish i had some of the crumbs that are falling apart but kind of make it feel like more full in a way um, usually if I see any crumbs I left behind, I would sometimes Photoshop that out too or just pick it off and take more photos. But Photoshop, there's some like, there's some really good photo editing apps on the iPhone that I use to kind of just edit out small flaws with my flat lays because sometimes I don't really see it until I bring it 
up in my camera roll. And yes, I do take my flat plates with my iPhone only. <laughs> it does help that the bigger the plate and the bigger the food item, the easier it is for the audience to kind of draw their eye towards it. Compared to the smaller plate or smaller wooden board, they may be drawn to other items in the flat lay. So it really depends on how well or how much you want to present your main dish. For me, I experiment with both, of course. Um, and in the end, I'm gonna edit them all and see what best fits my Instagram. And if you happen to have a stain on your table, like I do here, sometimes you can just move around some of the props to cover it. So just an advice. May I suggest that if you do have other ingredients in your cooking, that you can have them peeking out at in the corner. Again, I think this adds a lot more life to your flat lay so that it's not just like dish, dish, food, ingredients. I like adding like small things to like the edges of my flat lay to kind of show that there are other ingredients. There are other like things to tell with your story that you're uh, presenting in a flat lay. So it could be olive oil or maybe wine. For this case, I'm gonna use olive oil. And again, I would recommend also using a lot of the tools that you did use to cook. This is brush number 42. <laughs> it's a focus focusing. <laughs> Maybe if the rolling pin isn't enough, I'm gonna add this wooden spoon. They're kind of on the same color palette, so um, it helps in making these colors complement each other. And as another tip, you don't always have to keep things perfectly aligned. Like you can see many lines on this flat lay where like the lines come from like the wooden, the wood panels of this table. So you see lines here, you see lines through these plates, lines through the edges of the rolling pin and the bowl. Think shapes. It doesn't always have to be completely aligned. The OCD in me is screaming right now, but like, definitely like move it around, kind of like turn it a little bit so it looks a little bit undone and not too staged. So I usually just move around and take more example photos. I ended up leaving the smaller nods in here, but it kind of adds a nice touch to it. What I also usually try to do is make sure that there aren't whole items being shown in my flat lay. Like for example, you see in the camera that it's, right now you see the whole items, but really how what I actually take the photo of would be like maybe half of this dish or maybe part of this rolling pin, three quarters of this bowl. So definitely experiment and try to move around these items so that you can have them peeking out from different sides of your photo. You can like switch some of these items. Maybe I want the spoon to go over here. Sponsored by Trader Joe's. <laughs> Reshoot it. What also helps for the theme that I'm going for is that I try not to like make the linen look too neat. And I also try not making anything, bringing anything that's too bright and eye-catching that's not the naan or the main dish. I keep it very subdued for the linens and for a lot of the other items in that play a part as a, I guess like a side character or like a prop. Things to avoid, um, I would probably not throw anything that doesn't add to your story, anything that doesn't seem like it would make sense being in there. For example, like some people may like have, might try to have a flat lay where it's non-food related, but they keep their phone in there or maybe like a hand. If it doesn't add to your story, don't. I would, rec I would not recommend doing it because it can come off as a little bit questionable. For me, I feel like it's a little bit try hard, but. <laughs> To my previous point, the other things that I try not to do personally for my own flat lays is to add anything that is too eye-catching. So say if I had a hot pink spoon, I would not be adding it to this kind of flat lay because I want the attention to be on the dish. Now, if you were having like a brighter, more fun looking flat lay, um, like we can show later maybe, then if you were having like a brighter flat lay or 
maybe a happier theme that you're going for. A lot of restaurants tend to do that with propping their um, food on maybe red or bright blue backgrounds. There are other props that are bright that could be more appropriate in that regard. For me personally, I try to keep it very toned down. So definitely try building your story with a lot of different props. Um, don't go too crazy though. So I think the amount of items I have in this particular flat lay is enough for what I'm going for. If I had like five other items that could have been related to this particular theme, I probably would not add it in addition to these items. Try to balance it out. Um, you can balance it out by kind of visualizing through your phone how many items do fit in that particular grid. So as you can see, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, questionably nine if you count the linens. I see nine items that can fit in this grid um, at a good distance to from the camera. So I'm gonna keep it at nine items or keep it at eight, maybe 10 items. It depends on the size of your um, props as well. But don't overdo it. I wouldn't recommend uh, adding things that may seem like you just kind of scattered <laughs> on, a, on your table. Bring in the items into your flat lay that are related to the theme you are going for. Even if it's not related, I will keep it closely to the theme that you're going for. So maybe I didn't actually use a lot of olive oil. Maybe I have a house plant somewhere that may fit with the other green tones that you see from the cilantro. I may add the plant right here. So definitely play around with it. Don't overdo it and keep it to your story and keep it to your theme. I think that's one of the most important things when developing a flat leg that you stay to a, your particular story and you want to convey a message to your audience in a way. The props that you add don't have to be completely clean or like neat. It can be very undone. Like as you can see, my rolling pin is still has still has like some of the dough in it. And for maybe like a different dish, maybe not this one, but for another dish that I'm maybe baking or making um, pastries out of, I may add the actual board in which there's some dough laying around and maybe add the rolling pin to as a nice touch to it. So that's one suggestion. You can see all the dough that I left behind. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So I never actually know what my flat lay will look like until I actually develop um, the flat lay myself. So most of the time it's winging it, but it is a lot of thought that you have to put into it at the moment, in the moment. Also be mindful of the space that you have between your props. Um, I can't stress that enough because that's something you can't really fix in an editing program, but you can fix in the moment and when you are actually viewing it from the bird's eye view. So right now I see that the board is taking up a lot of the space at the very uh, top of my photo. Probably want that to just peek out but not take away, take up too much attention from my dish. You experiment it. Um, another advice that I can offer for um, spacing out the props would also be to like not let the bigger props touch each other. Like I would not have this bowl of cilantro touch this uh, plate of, of like the whole cilantro. I try to keep it spaced out between the spoon and the wooden board. Keeping it too close makes the whole composition of the photo and flat lay look a little bit cluttered in a way. I try to avoid that by just continuously um, spacing out my props as I'm taking multiple photos to see what I like and what I don't like. It's a lot of trial and error. The end result is usually very worth it. <laughs> the camera up there shows the top of the olive oil, but like really I'm seeing like the corner of the bottle and what's inside this bottle. So very different once you actually bring it into your editing program, what you see. And again, I'm going for like a more natural looking uh, lifestyle Instagram. So you can see that I have a lot of browns, some greens that are too eye-catching, um, beige, whites, creams. So I keep it to my own theme, but again, everyone's different in the story that they want to tell and the flat lay they want to present. So I forgot to add that there are some unlikely props that you may not think off the bat of use, but may add a lot more story or touch to your flat lay. 
So for example, not for this particular flat lay, but for like flat lays that have drinks, you may want to put in a hand to grab a cup and just add that to your flat lay. Or you can use someone else's hand. It's got a little bit dirty and ugly right now, but you can have someone else's hand hold a cup in your flat lay. So that's another unlikely prop that you may not think off the bat, but it is a good tip that I've learned throughout the years of like, you know, making cocktails and going to happy hours that we use hands as props in the flat lays. Um, another thing is that if you are adding um, text to your flat lays, I would definitely give um, the space between each prop a little bit more room. Um, so for example, if I were to take a picture of this flat lay right now and post to my story adding small text between each item, I have enough space to do that without it overlapping the other props. So maybe I want to label cilantro right here or um, garlic butter over here. Some people actually like adding their iPhones to some flat lays. Again, not a good prop for this particular flat lay because it's too dark too. But also um, maybe if you're going out to brunch and you have a lighter colored background that contrasts as well with your other props, then I would add the iPhone. Phones, hands are unlikely props that you can consider. Um, sometimes I'll add vegetables or fruits I didn't even cook with in uh, my flat lays just because it does add to the theme. So maybe I might add like onion buds over here if I wanted to. I did that with a previous photo of mine, but it adds to like the fall like warm, warm like um, flat lay. So those are just other suggestions too. In short, when creating your flat lays, definitely think about a story or theme you're going for that may not always apply to things that you cook but also things that you want to present like for example i've had flat lays on uh wrapping christmas gifts and i had like ornaments laying around and wine and baskets and everything or maybe it's a flat lay when you're going out with friends to brunch and you want to take a photo with the food you're eating me i i um usually do flat lays when it comes to me and my cooking so for today my example was were these naans that I made for the first time. Composition is important when it comes to creating your flat lays. Definitely experiment with different types of dishes, shapes of dishes. So for me, I experimented with clear, this clear bowl and this square porcelain saucer or cup bowl. Experiment with texture too. Um, so as you can see, there's wooden textures from the background and texture from different vegetables and the dough and everything that's shown as undone. When also picking out your background, make sure that it, the color of the background contrasts with the props on the table. There aren't a lot of dark items that blend in with the tabletop here so that it just sticks out when you're looking at the flat lay photo. Also experiment with different colors that match your theme. So for me, I was going for a desaturated and more uh, fall-like flat lay. So a lot of greens, a lot of browns, beige, creams, um, the occasional yellow, gold. Try to like be a little bit more mindful and always think about your theme and everything that you're doing when it comes to setting up your flat lay because that's one of the most important things is the theme and the story that you're going for. Don't be afraid to experiment with different kinds of unrelated props. So say this olive oil bottle or a wine bottle or maybe adding um, a hand or a phone um, in your photo. For me, I added olive oil in the corner, just peeking out. It didn't take away from a lot of the attention from the non. And on that, when propping up your flat lay, also make sure your items do not draw too much attention from the main point of what you're trying to convey in your flat lay. Like for example, I'm trying to have the audience draw their attention more to the naan than maybe the cilantro or the butter or the rolling pin. I try to keep the more less significant props towards the edges or maybe even like away or just kind of like outlying the main point. I don't usually center my main subject. As you can see, the naan is on the side I try to make it look as natural as possible when it comes to flat lays. So I keep it to the side. I would turn the bowl to make sure that you can see like different types of naan in the same bowl. For some people, it does help to have it centered if you want to surround the main point 
with the ingredients that were used. It really depends on how you want to present your flat lays, but that's just another suggestion too, that you can center everything and surround it by just pulling up some of the props, wrinkling up your linens. Again, experiment a lot. Colors, texture, composition. Make sure you know the flat lay looks on um, your photo from a bird's eye view so that you know how many props you can fit in without making it look too cluttered. And how you can tell if it's too cluttered is if these items are not spaced away from each other too much. So it's really up to your judgment how you want space, but any less than this sort of spacing, I would think would be too cluttered, too close for my flat leg. Again, up to you. Try to be reasonable in how many props you add to your flat leg and whether or not these props can be overlapped. Like for example, this wooden board and the rolling pin. I think that's all the advice that I have for creating your flat lay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about like how to end it, but it's like, I hope you all learned a lot about flat lays today and I hope to see more flat lays on everyone's Instagram. <laughs> Bye camera. Bye other camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Jacinta for going through that with us because I don't know how to flat lay at all and she is like a master of flat lay in my eyes because I look at her feed and I'm like wow these flat lays are incredibly clean, incredibly neat, incredibly, incredibly organized and like to just go through that process with her of making a flat lay, it took a while. We filled up like 350 gigabytes worth of cards and uh, two batteries so <laughs> there was a lot but Thank you to Jacinta. If you guys want to check out her page, give her a follow, whatever it is. I'm going to leave her link in the description below to her Instagram. And yeah, that's all for today's video, guys. So make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much. Have an amazing day, morning, night, wherever you watch from. And I'll see you then. Peace. House the <laughs> He said the truth.